Welcome to your new favorite band, the podcast brought to you by the LA Lady. And now, your hosts, Dallas Dwight and Drizzle Silvera. Oh, that's me. I missed my cue. Hello there. What's up? I am Dallas Dwight. Sorry about the longer than average pause. Welcome back to your new favorite band. This is episode 19. Sitting across the table from me is... The wonderful, the one, the <laughs> only, very uh, hu- humble, lots of humility, uh, yep. Drizzle Silvera. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, I would describe you as one of the top three humblest people right right behind me, of course. Yeah, <laughs> you take the first two slots, right? I take the first two slots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the jokes continue. How's it going, Driz? What's going on? Hey, man, I'm having a great day. Uh, getting uh, get ready for our Saturday, this Saturday coming up. Uh, another yes. player one up gig, right? Which will be... Um, I think long past by the time this comes out, but yes, yes, we are getting ready for that. That's going to be really fun. I really like playing the the Rock Hill uh, player one up. Rock Hill, South Carolina is our uh, hometown as a band. We say Charlotte because it's not worth having the conversation 10 million times of where are you from? Rock Hill. Where's that? Charlotte. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Having that little conversation with every single person that asks 100% of the time is super annoying. So I just cut off the first part and say Charlotte now. (laughs) This is what I usually say. Uh, Well, technically we're Rock Hill, South Carolina, but it's pretty much Charlotte. Just because I like it. Well, how far is that from Charlotte? Well, you get on the 77 going (laughs) south and uh, then you cross state line. There's Carowinds right there. Uh, You know, Carowinds. People are from like Nebraska. They have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's just, it becomes a really long winded conversation and yeah. we know each other better at the end. Right. Well, they know about, about me. You know, right. So, okay. That's fair that yeah. you said the 77. So they know where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe people just say 77, get on 77. Yeah. Hop no, on, it's... hop on 77, take it to 485. Yeah. I mean, I understand adding the, but it just sounds weird. So it's like, you know, it's like having a bunch of Paul Reed Smiths in a row. Mm-hmm. And then you say, can you grab the Paul Reed Smith? Right. Right. But then you don't know which one's which. You know. Well, you can add the number to it. Like, the S2. Okay. The S2. Yeah. Right. Like, Take- the S2 studio sitting right behind you. Right. No, I understand the 485. It just is very L.A. <laughs> Do they even do that anywhere else, or is it just L.A.? <laughs> I, I don't even think about it. Like, I don't hear people say, like, if someone were to say to me, oh, yeah, uh, 485. I don't think the before that. Like, I don't think in my head they're saying it wrong. Right. All right. I'm saying it's California. The communication but, uh, is clear either way. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting, but it is very LA to be like, yeah, I took the 77. <laughs> it's, I mean, maybe it's LA according to a bunch of New Yorkers on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah. But it's true, though, because they do say that. You listen to them, you know, anyone from LA on a podcast or something, and they bring it up, they always say that. Yeah, if may- I moved maybe, there for any know. length of time, I'd probably start saying it too. So it's like it's just one of those things. Dude, you're there for like a month and you come back yeah. and you're like, What's up, bro? <laughs> I just become Sebastian Bach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I think they're actually from like New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. True, but, but uh, there there is a Jersey shore. So somehow you still get no the one's beach. more LA than Baz, even if that's not even where he's from. <laughs> right? <laughs> Brother, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, another day, another nice view. We've got the uh, third cam set up, so you get to see some, uh, oh, maybe some little <laughs> trinkets here on the table. Hey, we table might have candy. something a little later in the podcast. Um, and our wonderful, beautiful background. Dallas, you designed that. You're just... Sure. Tell these, yeah. tell these people in a humble way. Well, yeah. actually, you always do it that way. Uh, in a humble... The humblest way I could probably put it is there's literally no one alive better than me. Yeah. <laughs> No, I did do that. I'm not laughing because I I only laugh at jokes. (laughs) There's nothing funny about that. (laughs) Yeah, I did our uh, I did our uh, art for the podcast and everything. I do all of our uh, graphic design for the most part, all of our merch, all of our uh, the Dirty Damn Tricks album art, all that stuff. So um, we tried and and I I kind of got um, it was kind of an accident (laughs) because like I I didn't want to necessarily do it, but I I have the skills. That's what I went to school for and been doing it for a long time since I was a kid. But uh, the graphic design stuff, if you give me pen and paper, no, I can't do anything. But That's give me a where computer. I come into play, right? <laughs> yeah, give me a computer, I can make something happen. But uh, I didn't want to do it. I was like, all right, well, so we did like a 99 designs logo contest where a bunch of different designers submitted logos. We did, uh, hired someone to do Some the fiber. artwork. 
Yeah, Fiverr and uh, everything that came back, we were all just like, it's not really that good. <laughs> yeah. So I told everyone, this is a year and a half ago or so. Yeah, two years, 2020. I told everyone, because well, we were recording the album. Mm -hmm. I told all you guys, I was like, well, let me take a stab at it. And um, I'm just not going to do, because I hate doing the back and forth. Can you tweak this? No, I can't. This is it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, we're not going to do a bunch of back and forth. I'll give it one crack. And, and if, we'd already if, spent if, like how much money trying to not, find not people? Not a ton. Not a ton. Yeah. A few hundred bucks. And um, yeah, so I was like, I'll take a crack at it. And, and if everybody kind of likes it, then we'll just do that. And that's what happened. So the logo and um, the album art and everything, which I think we can pull up right here. If you give me. On well, the font too. Jiffy. The font, we were like trying to find fonts and it's just like. Yeah, but, you know, I feel like it could be better. And, right. You know, we <laughs> you, you sit down for I don't know how long. And uh, it was just like, oh, yeah, that dude, that's it. Or, like, you were on the right track, and there was a couple, like, little ideas here and there. And uh, and you, you were so like, the, well, how about uh, this? This was the logo. You guys know. I yeah. Guess. Well, I mean, you kinda, can kind of see it. Let me uh, actually do this correctly instead of, like, a moron. How about that? Hey. What's going on here? Okay. Well, we didn't accurately set that up. That's fine. We'll come back to that later. All right. But you kind of saw the, the logo there. And yeah, on the, the TV. Uh, where is it? Yeah, what's this one we called it? it was, uh, the album was originally called Dirty Damn Tricks, and then we changed it to Dirty Tricks, and then we changed it back to Dirty Damn Tricks. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. And then the album art. Yeah, here it is. There you go. Woohoo. There we go. So those were uh, a little bit of what was going on at the time. And for those of you listening to the podcast, uh, it is uh, basically a sexy model on fire. It is. Uh, with his head chopped off. It is. Yeah. That is exactly A little more discreet. It. Like, you, like That's kind of like the interpretation of it. Um, that album art is time dated September 14th, 2020, by the way. <laughs> nice. So that's around your birthday. That's really we, close that's, to my birthday. And that's when we did the uh, gospel choir. So that yes. would have been album art was completed around the time of the gospel choir. But in here I have all sorts of merch designs for us, like this guy. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. One of my personal favorites. It's kind of hard yeah. to see with the background there because it's transparent, but yeah. it's uh, the LA maybe with an arrow and handwritten word. Fuck these guys. Yep. Love if it. you guys... Uh, Bear with me for one second. I can actually fix this. I think we can bear. We can bear. Well, so if you're audio only, you know, welcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it we're, doesn't make a difference. We're, we're, we're bearing. We're bearing like Bear grills. You know, we're just toughing it out. If your video, though, you're just seeing a black screen. There we are. Uh, but the, the yeah, screen won't pop up. Okay. Whoa. 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 <laughs> we are all over the place, dude. All right. We're back. All right. Yeah, fuck that. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> There's some stuff going wrong that we don't know what's going on. Welcome. We well, not to mention like this. This app has been updating every time yeah, for the last like couple it's getting weeks. Worse every time. Yeah. Right. Every time we boot it up. Well, welcome to uh, self-production here. Yeah, welcome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean these guys don't have a producer? <laughs> They're miscuing the intro halfway through the show, and <laughs> it's totally intentional. Turning totally to black screens. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, man, we got some a uh, couple shows coming up. Uh, some updates to the UK tour, which I guess at the time this comes out, we'll, we'll be done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Last week. I think this comes out the last week in May. Uh, but at the time of this recording, we just got word that a handful of those shows were canceled. Um, not from anything we did or anything we wanted to do, but... Complications. Welcome to 2022. Welcome to touring. Yeah. So, yeah, some of those shows have been canceled. Uh, we're still coming over there. We're still going to be partying with you guys. And in fact, uh, we're probably there right now. At the time of this, we should be either just coming back or about to go to Spain. One of the two. Yeah. So, <clears throat> super excited for that. Super excited. Because we're going to get over there and do the festivals at least. Yeah, the big, the big stuff, you Which know. Which is what we were yeah. most excited for, I think, anyway. Yeah. Because the, just the bands we're playing with are all really cool. So, and I can't wait. Uh, I, and I've said it probably on the podcast several times, but and they're probably your favorite too, just because you yeah. and I listen to yeah, them all the, the time. Most. But the one, the one I'm most forward looking, uh, most looking forward to seeing yeah. is definitely the New Roses. Yeah. And they play yeah. right after us. Yeah. Oh on, yeah. Uh, Sunday. 
Yeah. It's going to be fun. So May 22nd. Uh, I guess it would have happened by the time this comes out. In fact, I think it happened yesterday by the time this came out. But um, it was really great. We crushed it. <laughs> yeah, dude. We killed it, dude. It was just amazing. <laughs> the new roses were good. Mm-hmm. They were mean to me, though. Well, dude, I mean, it's just because you're so humble. Yeah. I just, like, <laughs> oppress people with my humility, you know. It's, like, aggressively humble. Your, your humility is oppressing. <laughs> I often get told, stop being so humble. Often. Yeah, I mean. Even almost daily. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm not quite at the daily point, but I'm getting there. Getting there. Yeah. My head's definitely growing, though. People <laughs> start tipping over a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was my guitar making my shoulder lean down, but right. it's really just because my head's leaning this you way. You just... brutal strap rash. Do you remember that? Yeah. What was that? What okay. Was that so that was after the Alabama weekend. The Alabama weekend. Yeah. yeah so uh, I, I had a new denim jacket on. It was like a denim vest, the one I made. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I didn't have my, it wasn't under my collar. It was above my collar. And so when I was rocking out and my guitar's like, I, I'm very violent with my guitar on stage yeah, same. and headstock coming down. It's like, especially on pushes. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, rocking my headstock <laughs> down. And so anyways, my strap was just constantly going back and forth Rubbing, there. Yeah. It took a week and a half for that rash to heal. It scabbed over. I had a scab. Okay. So for those of you watching, it was about as long as my index finger and about as wide as my index finger. And it the was first brutal. night I got it, the first night I got it, it was, was this, a welt. Was that like sidetracks? It welted up. In Alabama? Or was that the juke joint? This was actually um, this was actually the run with Seven Year Witch, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was only two days. Two, yeah. two, two dates that... Um, but I remember you were like, that. dude, my, uh, my strap. <laughs> and you pulled out. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rasan like almost turned white. He was like, oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> There's something cool about stage-related injuries, though. Uh, yeah, definitely, man. I felt, I was proud of that. Like anytime know, I'm bleeding proud. after a show for all my fingers, or like there's blood on my guitar, I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's it hurts, not, but it's I'm not cool. going to clean that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you take it to the guitar, you know, someone to fix up just, your guitar. And you're like, spray yeah, clear coat over it. Get it, get it all, uh, get it all taken care of. But you see that spot right there? Don't clean that. Off. A little chunk of my brain right there. Leave that on it. <laughs> that's the part of me that knows Chinese. <laughs> So now I don't know it anymore, but there it is. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know when you get a head injury and you like wake up speaking French or something? Yeah, I'm very familiar with that, actually. You know, okay. um, I've been getting a lot more head injuries since my head started uh, to, right. you Just know, Right. Getting through doors and stuff is a whole ordeal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, normal door width. Can't quite accommodate the size of the head that we have. <laughs> So anyway, we we request everyone knows every venue knows we request special double doors. Yeah, <coughs> and or those wheelchair access because they do right. come with the wider doors. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and wheelchair access. We do actually request that people kind of lift it up and carry. <laughs> yeah, with palm fronds, you know, palm fronds especially, uh, I, and they have to be imported from Egypt. And or and or second best is Israel. You know, we okay. take we do take Israel, um, but mostly Egypt, sure. right? Yeah. Right. Egyptian it's called the Cleopatra. You got to treat me like Cleopatra. Yeah. Minus the snake venom. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> anyway. And this has been history with the LA maybe. Welcome. Cleopatra died from a self-inflicted uh, viper bite, right? Suicide by viper. Suicide by viper. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pit viper. She was supposed to be pretty hot, right? But see, was this like, and then we'll never know, but was this like BC hot? <laughs> or was this like you know she's actually hot all right let's talk about bc hot ten no ten, razors a 10 and like no bix <laughs> we're not factoring in smells when we're looking at a picture yeah because those can't be good uh we uh so so if she's if she was a 10 which everyone says she was you know I, a lot of i know a lot of friends that were there and stuff and um what whatever year this was that's got to be like a two <laughs> <laughs> by like LA 2022 standards. <laughs> She's got like a unibrow. Like, you know, yeah, like, unibrow and her hair's like yeah. full of olive oil. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. She just looks wet all the time. <laughs> Everyone's like, She's not so because hot. of me. <laughs> uh, it's because she lives in the freaking desert. Yeah, dude. Well, I remember like 
oh, hearing about all this beauty of this royalty in you know England and the what f- oh, yeah, fucking yeah. whatever area, and then you yeah. look at these yeah. s- these portraits. And very rarely are they good. I mean, it's definitely like there's been too much in in fucking. You right. know what I'm talking oh, yeah, about? Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. They're all yeah, and bread and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Scary. And overweight, overweight was a sign of beauty because you had money. It was a sign of rich, right? Wealthy. Wealth, yeah, yeah. It was a sign of wealthy, is what I just said. Like a moron. So if all the food, you know, does disappear and we become fat rock stars mm-hmm. while everyone's starving, then maybe we'll be considered Kings? Royalty. Royalty. Yeah. Rock and roll royalty. That'd be a cool album name. Rock and roll <laughs> Rock and Roll Royalty. <laughs> rock and roll. That's actually kind of hard to say. Rock, rock and, and roll, roll royalty. royalty. Roll royalty. Yeah. So uh and that that's hilarious because Eric I think it's Eric Gales. Yeah. Lefty. And uh, Joe Bonamassa, they have that, mm-hmm. that play on word royal and tea, but it's royal tea, like the, the tea you drink is royal. Like royal yeah. tea. Yeah. Is that a band they have together or what? No, maybe a single. Oh, it's a song. Yeah. I know, I know Joe Bonamassa definitely has, maybe, maybe it was an album. Gosh, I'm falling behind. The last, last Joe Bonamassa album I really got into hardcore was um, Redemption. Killer yeah, album. What year was that? Killer album. Like 13, Man, that's got to be like, no, no, maybe 2018, 2019. Oh, okay. I want to say somewhere around there. Amazing, amazing album. I think, I think if rock and roll guys, you know, they, they probably see Bonham Austin like, oh, he's the blues guy. Like, yeah. if they gave him a chance to listen to his record, they'd be like, man, this guy fucking rocks, you yeah. know? Because he really does. Yeah. Yeah. Killer, and he killer can, player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, what a killer collection of guitars and gear. Yeah, that's kind of his thing, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, so if you ever watch like the Nerdville series that he's got, you know, some, some of the uh, YouTube videos, it's so cool. If you're, if you're a gear slut like myself, you go and you uh, check out those videos, you're just salivating all over everything mm-hmm. and maybe need to stuff a few tissues. In Is he your one pants. of those guys that has a dumble? He's one of those guys who has a dumble, yeah. John Mayer has one like a hundred grand or something. Oh yeah. Something. Yeah. The overdrive special. Yeah. I love the, the clones where they call it the overrated special. Yeah. <laughs> Sor- Soriatone Two or Rock Seriatone. is basically a dumble. Yeah. Those are like five grand a piece. Five to 10. Yeah. yeah. I think they have some more affordable options now, like around the, uh, they do sound good from what I've heard. Yeah. They sound great. I mean, I'm a fan, but I'm also feel like what you can get for 15, 1600 bucks, you know, it's can, not. Yeah. Can it's, in my opinion rival or sound just as good with the right pedal in front of it, you know? So Yeah, it's the uh you know it's the eighty twenty rule. Yeah. Get eighty percent there. It, it it takes it takes twenty percent of the effort to get eighty percent of the way there. Yeah. And eighty percent of the effort to get that last twenty. So it's like you can get most of the way there. Yeah. By getting a just a fender or whatever, you know. You know, I've done the whole YouTube scour looking for the the dumbbells and checking them out, you know, from studio reviews. And yeah, they sound great. I, I really think they do. I think it's just a rarity collectible thing, but, you know, more than the sound. Exactly. For me, like, uh, I, I gravitate towards the more, you know, ac- accessible original boutique camp, which are the Mesas, mm-hmm. you know, the Mark 1s, Mark 2s. Uh, yeah. uh, in my case, the Fillmore is just amazing. Yeah. My favorite amp. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. With the big cab you got in there. Yeah, they were like, they were truly like America's first like true boutique mm-hmm. amplifier, you know. It's just been a while. Yeah, I don't get so much into the boutique stuff. Yeah. And just I love me, a good Marshall. Like the tried and true stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. a good Fender. You know, uh, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't venture too far out from those. You know, it's kind of for me, the, the big three, Mesa, Fender, and uh, Marshall. Mm-hmm. And Shrek. Crate. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some crate, dude. <laughs> you just caught me like so off guard there. That's why it was even funnier. The big four of amps. You got Marshall. You got Mesa. You got crate. And you got Fender. <laughs> Everyone's like, wait, what was the third one? <laughs> They're Googling the prices for crate. They're like $80. It's like, wait. <laughs> oh, dude, you remember crate had offered like half stacks? Probably still do. Oh, dude, for like, what, 400 bucks or something yeah. like well, that? Well, you could also get that Marshall MGFX thing. 
Yeah. The solid state half stack, that was like 400 bucks. And for 400 bucks, you could have a Marshall half stack. Yeah. You know, it wasn't what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't what you thought it was, but it was a Marshall half stack. Daniel had one. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were cool. Uh, there was one, there was like a little mini Marshall that they made. It was uh, like two, 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 it looked like a shrunken down 412, but two of them. And it just had a single 12 in each and then uh, just a small little tube head. Um, um, I guess kind of like what they're doing. Kind of the vibe of the Mark II studio that they have out now that that's the Plexi. Mm-hmm. But uh, I remember those. I remember my friend's dad. And they were solid state, I believe, but they actually sounded really good. Yeah. They didn't have all the onboard stuff that the MGFX had. Um, but yeah, they were they were cool little like mini stacks that could get pretty loud and, and, and sounded decent, you know? I bought a JCM 600 because <laughs> it said it was rare on eBay. So I had one of those. I guess it was pretty rare. I haven't seen one since. And um, I had that for a while. Didn't like it very much. I didn't like um, I didn't like real amps very much in the beginning. I don't know why. It's because it, it, it you couldn't the push first, them the at your parents' amp, house to actually get them yeah, sounding good, right? The first amp that I really liked just right away was the 5153. Yeah. Because I got that and I plugged it up right away. I was like, this amp rips. <laughs> like, right, right away, that's the sound. But other amps, it was like, I don't know how people are getting these sounds on the records with this. Because I had a dual rectifier. And it just sounded like shit the whole time I had it. Like the best I got that amp to sound was putting it on the clean channel and just turning it up loud. And it kind of got like an ACDC crunch to it. But as soon as I went on channel two or three, it was just like, just like horrible sounding. So you'll, you'll flip at this. My, my one of my best friend's dads, um, he's a vintage guitar collector and so is his son, mm-hmm. my buddy. First Elliot. Axe and, and um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, dude. Down electro. I need to while you while you bring this up. I need to bring uh, pull up this first act guitar that I had for you. Okay, all right, pull that up. It's actually because it's actually a cool body shape. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, he had two very rare Marshalls, mm-hmm. uh, both of which were stolen in L.A. back in the seventies, okay. uh, I believe. Probably by Slash. <laughs> Probably. Slash was famous. Slash for is like on us. a yeah. Slash is on a on a corner like mainline in here, and yeah. <laughs> like after a gig, just like. Oh, dude, fucking look at that amp. What's this band playing? <laughs> this is the one I had here. Panzer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was the friend. That was the name of his band. Oh, uh, Panzer. Really cool. Really cool music. Ooh. This is the one I had. Oh, yeah. It's a cool body. But are, where, the where folks, are, going? are the where, folks seeing these? Where, no, not yet. Where are you going with that story? Yeah, so um, I wanted to ask you if you've ever heard of this extremely rare Marshall. It was a blonde head. 200 watt it was called a marshall major have you yeah. ever heard of a marshall major yeah i wonder if you can pull it up after you get your first act oh there's the hello kitty one all right let's pull it up for everyone to see <laughs> <laughs> the hello kitty one yeah but yeah it was a marshall major 200 watts and the amount uh, d- d- the amount of headroom you get with 200 watts is just like cross-eyingly like ridiculous you get a couple headrooms <laughs> yeah, let me get a couple heads <sighs> that's a small man I'm trying to trying to show you guys this thing. All right, we'll just we'll just do this. It's this. Uh, oh, come on, man. This one here. That that red one. Yeah. Like See, almost like wants a, to be a burst. But it's like a it's like a Les Paul kind of, but with that reverse horn. Yeah, that's actually not the exact one I had. Mine only had two knobs, I think, and they were they weren't knobs like that. Gotcha. But uh, I had that guitar for a long time. I learned to play a lot of songs on that guitar, and all the Guns and Roses stuff, everything. And then um, uh, got some other guitars, and then Daniel Kyer and I decided to try to break that guitar. And that's when we found out that breaking a guitar is not as easy as you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we grabbed it and just hammered it onto the ground. Absolutely nothing <laughs> broke on it, and it just sent shockwaves through our arms, and the guitar was just like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, that's amazing, dude. Nothing, nothing broke, not a crack on it, nothing. Like, <laughs> that's wild. We, were, we hit it like four more times before anything happened, and it was just like a scratch. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> it was ridiculous, dude. Uh, the Marshall Major, you said? Yeah, the Marshall Major. Let's see if we can find that. So he had a Marshall Major. That was stolen. And then he had a, uh, I want to say a 69 Super Lead. Marshall Super Lead, 68, 69, 67, somewhere around there. Maybe it was a 71, but uh, I, I think it was pre-70s, but it was a Super Lead. Major Plexi? 200 yeah. watt? 200 watt. That's the one there. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to see on the... So it's pretty hard to see, but if you want to look These them up... These JVM 410s, by the way, sound incredible. Yeah, they're, they're good. I had one of those, and they sound awesome. 
Yeah, the Marshall Major. So it was blonde. I think I think it was blonde because he had um, stripped the uh, actual black Tolex off. Oh, gotcha. And uh, yeah, I can't remember. It was pull, so long ago when I heard the uh, story. I guess Frushi plays him from Chili Peppers. Oh, cool. Yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I knew he did. Um, that's yeah. my my signature model there, the MS4. Yeah. Well, I use like a wall of them. It's amazing. A wall of them that come up to your ankle. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it comes up to my knees because I got a wall, and then I got a level on top of that as well. Right. Um. But yeah, the Marshall Major. Really, I've never gotten to actually see one in my life, mm-hmm. uh, up close and personal. But uh, are they just rare now or something? Oh, extremely rare. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. a bunch of them made or what? I don't think there were a ton of them made. I mean, maybe a decent amount. I don't know the numbers, but um, I had looked, kind of looked into it a little bit like a while ago. That one there was like five grand. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, wow. So, hmm. Just big plexi sound. Yeah, huge. and Very, just extremely like clean. Yeah. Very clean. I mean, obviously it'll break up if you push it, but could you imagine pushing a 200 watt amp till it starts to break up? Yep. That would be a lot. Yeah. No, actually, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. I remember pushing like one of those like 150, like 150 watt heads like, like ages those PVs or whatever. ago. Yeah. Those are 120, I think. 120. Yeah, it was yeah. 120. Yeah. And I remember doing that ages ago and it doesn't really seem like it's louder than 100 watt. Um, but I guess. Nah. Yeah, I had the full 100 watt EVH, like the real. Head. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't have the fucking mommy 50 watt version like i had the fucking big boy you say mommy 50 50 watts will still peel the paint off the wall i know yeah <laughs> yeah you and it's not like but the crazy thing is 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 a 100 watt amp isn't that much louder than a 50 watt amp right it's just twice yeah <laughs> it's just twice as much it's just twice as good if yours is 50 sure 100 sure it's twice as good well i kept see growing up i always told my mom that making 100 on my science test wasn't really that much better than making a 50 and she wasn't, she, she didn't, she didn't get my math. Well, apparently you didn't know how to cut off letters from your old report card uh-huh. and tape them on your new report card. <laughs> You're in high school. Why did you get a star and, <laughs> and then run it through the printer and give your mom the corrected <laughs> report card? <laughs> Adjusted. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I remember That's doing that. I remember, I, remember that. Well, I was coming up and I guess you were too around the time where stuff was starting to move to online yeah or parents could just like log on and check your grades uh yeah no mine was still all paper by the time i, I graduated I had in 2010 some paper. i had i had some paper but you could definitely like through middle and high school log on to this thing called power school and just see all my classes and grades right there i think my mom got her first I still got the paper report card. i think my mom got her first computer in like 2004 or 5 so we had computers early yeah. in the 90s for sure it was yeah but uh i remember <laughs> Did I remember my first computer was a Windows 95? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I remember Windows XP was awesome. Do you remember 98? Windows 98? I don't remember the differences in them. I was too young. Gotcha. I, mean, I was born in 92, so. Dude, yeah. Well, I was born in but, 91. Uh, yeah. I'm so but, much younger than you. Yeah. It's stupid. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I remember uh, my uncle went to college and he kind of, like, left me his, like, Windows 95. Hmm. And I remember, like, he left a bunch of video games there. Dude, this one, it had the most amazing tracks on it, too. It was called Interstate 76. You told me this. We looked up that soundtrack. Dude, that soundtrack that? is amazing. And I didn't know until I figured it out <laughs> that you could take the disc for the, for the computer, mm-hmm. put it in a CD player, and the CD player would play the songs from the video game. Oh, that's awesome. And so, dude, I, I was like, oh, shit, I can take these tunes wherever I go. So I remember being in the car blasting straight up 70s funk. Interstate 76. Interstate 76 <laughs> we dude. need to look that up after this. Yeah. We need to find that. And uh, it was a cool game, too. You get to, like, drive weaponized cars, and you're, like, blowing other cars up with, like, crazy rockets and stuff. But, uh, yeah, Interstate 76, man. Just pull that up for later. Uh, but <coughs> there was something I was going to say on the, on the games. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of those old games were cool, though. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say the best racing game ever is uh, uh, SRX the game. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It has the best music ever. No. What well, does? SRX? Yeah. No, it's... Uh, what's that one that just came out? It's Tony Stewart's... Um, Tony Stewart's All-American Racing was the first one. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. SRX the game. SRX the game. That one has the hottest music. in The one in that it. has four tracks from an amazing band? Yep. Yeah. That's the one. Four tracks from an amazing band called The LA Movie. SRX the game. That's right, actually. If you didn't know that, uh, we, if you uh, go on your PlayStation 5, go on your Xbox Series X, One Plus, 360, whatever they call it now, you can tell which team I am, and by uh, SRX the game, we, there's actually four tracks of ours from Dirty Damn Tricks on that game. And what's cool... So we downloaded it, and we were, we were racing each other trying to beat laps uh, to Sucker Punch, which was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> but before we started, we turned all of the like game volume down uh-huh. and all that, and we turned the music volume all the way up. Yep. Yep. We uh, Also, if you boot the game up, Mr. Danger is the title track, <laughs> which is kind of cool. As soon as the game starts, it's just... Which is kind of fun. Yeah. That was awesome. But was- I remember we booted that up in my apartment. We were just like, whoa! <laughs> like shit dude we made it well, they didn't tell us we were the title track no they didn't yeah they just took our they just told us you know we're, we're using these songs or whatever where you know we'd work it out of course and um we had no idea we were the title track that was kind of cool so like as you're starting the game selecting your options figuring out the tracks all that stuff mr danger's playing the whole time so you yeah. cannot play that game without hearing us it's impossible yeah which is kind of cool it's awesome so SRX, the game has the best music in the in the business, and we're not biased. It just does. Yeah. No, no, that's just that's a, a study was done. Double blind. Cambridge, right? Double blind Harvard study. Oh, it was Harvard. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but didn't Cambridge do a yeah. follow up? They and, just asked and the, you and uh, me. Results were uh, unanimous amongst the study was yeah. It was a huge sample size. They asked you and they asked me what racing game had the best music. We both said SRX, the game. They did. They concluded from that sample size that 100 percent of people across the board believe that SRX the game has the best music. Oh, well, yeah. Why would, why, it's just, why would we lie? It's just good science. Yeah. Yeah. Science. Scientific method. And, and you know, they were like, well, you know, from the most humble people in the world, right. we don't, you know, they're obviously... What's your uh, favorite new band out there? Oh, it's us, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no band better. <laughs> That's a good way to make people hate you real fast. I know, right? <laughs> I, 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 it's like people listening... I hope everyone's like oh, these guys are legit joking because it's it's we're funny just having though, man. Fun. It's hilarious. It's funny though because I I do crack these jokes all the time, and you'd be amazed that people if you do it with a straight face, people think you're being for real. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, like I can't even joke anymore. Like I have to tell every single person, like, hey, excuse me, uh, I'm joking right now. What I'm about to say is a joke, and then it's like, well, now I'm not going to say it. Like that's lame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it t- kind of takes the wind out of the sails. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right, I guess we'll all just be boring fucking people, <laughs> not laughing or having fun. We played this gig. Um, it was the gig I played with Duff, actually. This other guy, Parthenon Huxley, love him. He came in. He's he's affiliated with the ELO camp. Oh, yeah, and, gotcha. Uh, dude, we hit it off right away because he had the same sense of humor. We started calling ourselves the talent. <laughs> And we'd walk into places and be like, excuse us, talent coming through. <laughs> Clearly joking, of course. Yeah. But um, now that I say that, I guess the people we were saying, excuse me, talent coming through to might not have known we were joking. So that's pretty funny. That's also really funny. It's somehow funnier to think about someone taking it seriously, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, at the end of the day. But like, at the same time, like it's a ratio game. Like if uh, right. too many people. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> then it's like, well, maybe I need to figure out a way to make it a little more clear or something. Yeah. Because my sense of humor is really dry anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like, I'll just tell you I'm the, you know, I'm the best and just stare at you with a straight face. And you're just like, uh, <laughs> does he think that for real? <laughs> you know, like that's just kind of my sense of humor. Yeah. But, um. The dry sense of humor, I think, is is fun because it, it's like a s- sense of confusion for the other person, and that's what's funny. Yeah, you. it's kind of like you a know? rush for you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like you know sarcasm. It's the same kind of thing. But uh, I think that's actually a. Uh, I think that comes from like the UK sense of humor. Like a lot of UK shows have that kind of thing. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Very dry. Very uh, sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy it's that. uh that's the kind of humor I grew up you know watching. Yeah. And witty, very witty as mm. well. Like. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to get to, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Brits, you know, don't let us down when we get over there. I would love to uh, experience the humor full on. Woo. Goodbye, headroom. <laughs> there we go. No room for head. That's killing me. <laughs> there can be no room for head. Yeah. In the podcast game. 
so we and then I some- cut to this camera. <laughs> oh, Max Headroom. Max Headroom, but not for the TV though. <laughs> yeah, true. So we brought some table candy today. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did bring some table candy. Um, so I, here's the way we'll probably do this table candy. We're gonna check out uh, this right here. This is the Richie Kotzen, the RK5. Uh, this is the second one. Um, the Mark II. Yeah. The Mark II. Yes. The MK2. So for those of you who don't know what MK stands for, it's Mark. MK stands for Marcus King. Mark, yeah, yeah, that's right. So this is the Mark II, and what we're going to do is uh, kind of just go through this pedal real quick and uh, hear some sounds. This used to be, uh, D- Dallas had this as a backup rig and a, um, uh, let's see, rehearsal rig. I actually gigged with this live all over. It's a really killer killer pedal so while he's tuning i'll kind of preface what we're going to do so we're going to go through and check out all the feature the p- features of this pedal and then for our paid members at the end we're going to go in and answer the age-old question will the rk5 v2 take pedals or not if you can see on the table i also have uh let's see a two pedal here pedals. two drive pedals different very different type of dri- drive pedal and we're going to see how the sans amp in this pedal handles these drive pedals so anyways so this is we're saying that this is actually a true analog amp there's no digital modeling or anything going on in it yeah no it I is realize, truly all that, analog that sounded yeah. like i was being sarcastic right after i talked about being sarcastic i'm not this is legit an analog uh rig sarcasm out the window yes it is a truly analog piece of gear yes um, uh, full analog <laughs> it's full on analog um and <laughs> now they're gonna think we're joking no it's it's analog hundred <laughs> percent so anyways and i'm not laughing because because i'm not being serious so here's just kind of straight no reverb and as he's playing i'll kind of go through and talk about the different sections of the pedal so on the front coming in first we have this really awesome um boost so it is a true boost and then if you click in this little button right here it's kind of hard to see for our viewers but there's a little black button right here uh-huh. uh this is a compressor it now turns your boost into a compressor and then so you, can you can't have a boost and up. a compressor no you yeah, cannot have a boost a and compressor. a compressor yeah let's hear the it. let's hear the compressor first so compressor first and you'll notice it you can turn down the level Now you really hear it catch the note. That's a pretty strong compressor. That's only a three. So you really hear it catch the note. Yesterday. (laughs) Yesterday. There was so many. Yeah. So many things that I never. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, um, great record. Great record. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you take it off the compressor. Now it's a true boost. So you can actually hit the front end of the uh, sans amp, nice and hard. So if you crank it a little bit, so it's kind of got that. Uh, Kind of got that boost thing hitting an amp, right? Yeah, because this is still the clean. Amp. Yep, this is still and and I run I run my cleans a little driven, so there's a touch touch of breakup. But you can control that with the pick too by just yeah you can, exactly. All right, so without changing anything, coming in from there, we have the next line in uh in order. Here we go, and it's actually right to left, which is interesting. Um, but I guess it's going it's in like order reading input manga. to output. Uh, so we have the Oh My God Drive. This is Richie Kotzen's signature drive pedal inside this unit. And so if I click this on, like this. So I'll kind of sweep the drive so you can hear the gambit. So that's kind of barely in crunch zone. So there's kind of true crunch zone. Go.
Good tone. Sounds good. So I'll bring that up for a lead kind of. Really nice riffing tone. And then really kind of taking it into the next next phase. Stratosphere. Where you really start to get why it's called Oh My God. Sorry, that was tone. So it's obviously a little too much there, but as far as this acceptable amount of drive, that's kind of as far as I'd push it. I kind of like that riff. <laughs> that was actually pretty dope. So I'm sweeping the tone. Sounds really nice right there. All right, so bring that back down. Drive sounds nice. It's sounds tasty. Really nice. So now it's here, kind of where I like to let it live. It's about right here. Let's hear what it sounds like hitting the boost into that. And this is this is what I do for my leads. Gives it that extra little crunchy crunch. Just gives it a little bit more, and it's really nice when you go to single notes. Yeah. All right. Fat finger and everything today. So now we're going to head on over. I'll, I'll turn the drive off just so you can really hear the reverb. So check this out. Oh, before we hit that, check this out. You hold your reverb on and off switch right here. And uh, oh, that's not holding it. There we go. That's holding it. Now we have a, a fancy little lit up LED tuner here. So, so I can always make sure I'm not in tune. Exactly. As soon as I see the green button, I quickly turn it any direction. Any direction but green, yeah. Getting it acceptable. There we go. So we're in tune. Uh, that was the best subtle hint I've ever done in my life that your guitar was out of tune. All right, anyways, um, <laughs> I'm just joking. So I've got the reverb on, and this is really cool because although it's a small pedal that does an entire pedal board's work, you have your sans amp you can turn on and off and actually this is kind of like running into a studio preamp so if you're thinking Nile Rodgers and kind of thunk it's got it with the boost let's try it with the boost i think it's gonna clip it oh let's try it with the compressor i don't like how that That's compressor nice. It's nice and sharp it's just back to the boost now So there's your uh, sans amp turned off. So your sans amp is essentially kind of mimicking your your amp, really. Um, so after the amp again, we have a reverb. I'll turn that back on. This is the large kind of hall reverb. And you can really dime it. And then bring it back to an extremely low level. Guitar inside. Now we'll check out the really short 
kind of uh, really short reverb. Just kind of cook it and kind of great for like a country riff. Da -da 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 Right? It's got that. I didn't say face and coochie, but it sounded like it. <laughs> All right. All right, we got to go back to the other tone then. God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I like it better with that. But it's kind of cool what you can do with just that two different types of sounds of reverb and, and just dialing in different different amounts, different levels. I'll kind of put it where I generally have it live, which is right around noon on a long haul. So you can do some nice pretty... Uh And what's cool is how good this sounds like on a single coil. So if you were to split it and like... Right? So for those of you guys listening, sounds really nice. There's Dallas right there. Good shot. <laughs> Got the jam lips going on. <laughs> the jam lips. The jam lips. <laughs> or uh, as uh, if you were MySpace days, duck face. Similar. You gotta have it like down. You gotta there look you go. up yeah. at the camera. Yeah. You also have to be 13 year olds and a girl. I guess I got it. I did it. Nailed it. All right. So uh, now from here, we're gonna get into some rather cool stuff. So I do have the. It does have a ground lift on it because I'm running XLR out, but it also has a uh, quarter inch out. This is uh, really cool right here. I'm gonna turn on the delay. So you can hear kind of like a standard uh, delay. So it's got some drift, which is modulation, single knob. Kind of turn the turn level that up all so the you way can up. hear a, bit, a little bit. Drift all the way up. Drift is all the way up. You'll have to play something to kind of hear the modulation. Let's bring it back. Really sounds good right around 11 o'clock. You dime that level for me. Dime it. Let's get the. I turn the delay off. I can make it swim a little bit more with the verb. If I, this would be something that would sound really good with a little bit of the... Let me go to the... That's like studio ready tone right there, dude. Right? <laughs> right? That's a song by the Dangerous Summer called uh, The Permanent Rain. But it's a, it's the best example I've heard for like dotted eighth delay. So I always use it to test time. Gotcha, it. gotcha. No, it sounds great. But you could do any riff. Or you could do the classic edge, you know. Uh, what are they doing? There? I guess I gotta do the same tempo. Here, I'll set it for you. Let's get it. Get the if he does, but it's a really cool like. It's a really nice rev. I just wish I remembered it, man. It's been a long time. 
So you guys are starting to see how versatile this pedal really is. It's an amazing piece of gear. All right. Give me like max verb. Max verb. So I'm going to show you a little trick with this pedal. I'm going to turn the drive on, but bring your volume about halfway back. for you there yeah it's just some fun all right so let's bring it back to a more reasonable all right so we're getting we're uh, getting some killer sounds out of this little unit uh, by the way the reason we're kind of getting into this as well is it's some fun extra content and also these are what this pedal is what i bring as a backup if my quad cortex goes down yeah because i could life yeah because i can definitely get through an entire show and what i need to do there might be a little bit of elements here and they're missing but for the most part this will cover all my bases and do it well and sound great and again i don't need to have an amp i can go xlr out and it really is that piece of gear you can just take anywhere and no, you're going to be fine. And not to mention, I've also used this uh, for practicing parts before shows. Uh, so for those of you musicians out there who are like, man, I really wish I had something small that could do a ton of stuff. And you know, and this has a uh, headphones as well. Yeah, right? it, so that's what I'm getting into. You could just power it up. So if you see this little button here, it's kind of hard to see again. Sorry, folks. But if you press the headphone output button, it actually turns uh, up the output level of the quarter inch jack to now facilitate headphones, can stuff like that. And uh, so I'll throw my in ears in my molds and uh, and plug this into this unit. And then you if sit I there quietly in the hotel room. You know, yep. yeah, yeah. Practice. So. Um, the last feature we're going to get into for our non-paid viewers of this pedal uh, well I guess two features we have a fuzz to check out the fuzz is really nice the fuzz is actually really good in this pedal so we'll go ahead and turn off the verb and delay Oop, there we go What else do you need to say? That's the fuzz right there. Go back so the now fuzz. back off. Yeah, that's great. And so back to where I kind of leave it. This is where it leaves for me. And again, you can adjust it to whatever system you're running through. This is what kind of sounded best in the cans. 
All right. <laughs> so the last little feature, give Dallas a guitar, man. It's a good time. All right. So we have this little known uh, effect here. It's actually a rotary effect. Um, so if you turn on your delay and you hit the little button that says Roto, you now have... Roto stands for rotisserie chicken. Exactly. Um, or if you're doing yard work, it stands for rototiller. Right. Yeah. Um, nothing else, though. So this is one I kind of like to blend with uh, the del- or the reverb. Kind of give a nice little atmospheric sound. And it sounds killer in the single coil. Now, this is the trick to this that really just takes it to the next level for me, is you can control the speed between a fast and a slow Leslie kind of rotary sound by hitting your tap tempo. This will be like the... So it's, it's, it's just a toggle. It's just a toggle, yep. Okay, so it's not like a tap tempo thing. No. When it's when it's it does it is a tap tempo when you're on the actual delay. Right. So you do have a tap tempo and you can adjust the time with the time dial or you can actually tap tempo it. So for those jazz chords, this is really cool. You, play the song so long oh god sounds really good right there yeah all right, so we uh, we did this thing on the last pedal we tested and kind of went through and had fun. We, uh, and I think it should be a thing. Now, we probably shouldn't play the exact thing for copyright reasons, mm-hmm. but we can play something similar to it. Will it sweet child? Will it sweet child? Will it sweet child? <laughs> That's the old, the test for sure. The old test. Okay, so we need a lot of reverb. Tempo would be like... Just a touch here, a little bit of an extra drive. I have to not play the actual riff though? Yeah, otherwise we won't get money for this video. Maybe I'll play it up a few steps, how about that? Okay, yeah. Is that verb all the way up? Nope. I think it needs to be pretty close to all the way up. Can you maybe try the compressor? Full octave. doesn't have the same punch, man. Now let's do the chord. That's pretty close right there. That's really nice. All right, I think we answered the question. Yes, it will, it sweet will, child. Sweet child. It will, sweet child. All righty. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining Very us good. on this Ta-ta for now this episode to the, to the paid viewers. Casual yeah. listeners. This, yeah, it's simple. Look how dumb I look. Let's go VIP. <laughs> Let's go VIP. All right, guys. All right. Peace.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the latest episode of your new favorite band. This is the end of the free content. But if you want to unlock the full uncut versions of every episode, head over to lamaybe.com slash VIP and sign up for our membership. For $7 a month, you'll get extended episodes of our podcast, a bonus episode every month, plus exclusive merch. You'll also be supporting us and helping us continue to stay on the road and make new music. And for that, we're eternally grateful so thank you